you're probably wondering, who cares about theme decks anyways? I already have the best Tauros Decidueye Shaman deck of all time and win every event I play in. Well, if you're bad like me and don't have Tauros Decidueye or Shaman, don't worry because there are events for us where there is no Tauros, no Decidueye, and definitely no Shaman. And that event is Theme Deck Tournaments. Theme Deck events have been out for a very long time now, and even though you don't earn as much rewards as the standard or expanded tournaments, they still are very fun and easy to win. But with my standard deck, I Shaman for 6 and then high 5 Juniper for 7 every turn. While that is true in standard format, with theme decks, everybody is at the same disadvantage of having a slow and clunky deck, which means nobody has an advantage, <laughs> and everybody is playing on the same playing field. When the Sun and Moon set came out, there were three theme decks that were added into the shop, and these theme decks are absolutely ridiculous. Just to put it into perspective, every single other theme deck that isn't a Sun and Moon theme deck is like Pikachu using Thunder Trash! Pikachu! Ow. But the Sun and Moon theme decks are like Use your bolt of lightning! Pikachu! Ah. Ow! These new Sun and Moon theme decks are absolutely ridiculous and give you a win increase percentage of 1000%. That number is completely accurate, I did the calculations myself. But on a more serious note, these Sun and Moon theme decks have been dominating the theme deck event format. So if you're looking to easily grind out some packs, then this video is for you. So here are the three theme decks that were newly released from Sun and Moon. We have the Incineroar theme deck, the Primarina theme deck, and the Decidueye theme deck. But out of these three theme decks, there has been one theme deck that has been absolutely dominating the theme deck tournaments, and that has been this Incineroar theme deck. I have probably done around 10 theme deck tournaments since Sun and Moon came out, and about 75% of the field is this Incineroar theme deck. I'm just going to go over the most important cards. I'm not going to go over every single card, but a lot of the cards that are inside this theme deck are very, very, very overpowered in theme deck format. This theme deck comes with two Torkoals, a basic Pokemon with 110 HP, which is absolutely ridiculous. And for one fire energy, you can burn the active Pokemon, which is pretty good. But the second attack, oh man, the second attack. Body slam for a fire and a colorless for 50. And if you flip heads, they're paralyzed in theme deck format on a basic Pokemon with 110 HP. That's pretty ridiculous. If you're able to start off with Torkoal and you have two fire energies in your hand, you're putting so much early game pressure and also the chance for paralysis is pretty ridiculous in my opinion. This card is very, very good. Keeping with fire types, we have the Incineroar line. Starting off with Litten, nothing too crazy. A fire for 10 and a fire colorless for 20. 70 HP, pretty decent uh, basic Pokemon for an evolution line. We have a Torracat stage 1, 90 HP. Uh, for one fire, you flip 3 coins, 20 times for each heads. Pretty mediocre attack just because you have to flip. But the second attack is pretty solid for a stage 1. For 3 fires, a 90 damage, and you discard an energy. That's not too shabby. That's pretty decent. But the most important card in this line is this Incineroar. <laughs> Incineroar is a 160 HP stage 2 in theme deck format. 160 HP. 160 HP. That is a lot of HP to go through for one prize card. And you have to take six prize cards to win a game. The first attack for a fire and a colorless is 30 damage, and your opponent's active Pokemon is now burned. That is very good uh, status condition to go ahead and inflict on your opponent. And the second attack for two fire and a colorless, you do 100 damage, flip two coins. This attack does 100 damage for each heads. 
So essentially with Darkest Lariat, you do have to flip at least one head to do 100 damage. Or if you're lucky and you flip two, you basically knock out anything in the theme deck format. There is not a single card that can stand up to Darkest Lariat in terms of having enough HP to tank it. Everything dies to Incineroar's Darkest Lariat. So the next card we're going to talk about, oh boy, this deck comes with not one, but two Pissimians. For one fighting energy, you do Fling, which is 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon, which is pretty ridiculous. If you start with Passimian and you throw a fighting energy on it, you can potentially snipe all of the basic Pokemon that is on the other person's bench at the beginning of the game, causing them to not be able to set up. And especially because of how clunky theme decks are, if they're not able to get the stage ones out in time, Fling is just going to win you the game because you're sniping all of their baby basic Pokemon with 60 or less HP. And for two colorless team play, this attack does 30 more damage for each of your bench Persimian. Because this theme deck does have two Persimian, you can go ahead and keep one on the bench. That means that you are doing 40 damage, which is pretty mediocre. But for early game pressure, very, very good. Palisand isn't necessarily a good card. Its attack is pretty mediocre. For one fighting and three colorless, you do 50 and you heal the same amount of damage. But its ability is pretty good. Wall of Sand, this Pokemon takes 20 less damage from attacks. Sometimes in these theme deck games, you do have to stall some turns just to be able to draw more cards to be able to find answers to things that your opponent has. And having a Palisand up in the active spot really early in the game, taking 20 less damage, uh, it's a pretty good Pokemon just to go ahead and sack while you set up your bench. And if you really do want to use this attack, you're healing 50 damage every turn. And if they don't have an answer to this, well, this is just going to tank the entire rest of the game for you. So the next card we have is Beware. Beware is a really good Pokemon, 130 HP stage 1, Bear Hug for 2 colorless does 40 and your opponent can't retreat. If you can lock something in the active spot unless they have a switch, they're not going anywhere, which means Beware is definitely knocking something out. And for 3 energies, you have Super Power. If you wish to do 40 more damage, you will do 120 and you do 20 damage to yourself. So if you have to knock out some big Pokemon that has already been damaged and you need that extra 40 damage, well, you can just go ahead and do it and just knock out whatever you feel like and take prize cards. And finally, oh man, this theme deck comes with an Oranguru for draw support. This is absolutely insane inside of a theme deck. Instruct, once during your turn, you may draw until you have three cards in your hand. With most theme decks, sometimes your hands do get pretty large, but if you're able to get this early game and not have any cards in your hand and continuously evolve and play down cards, Oranguru is going to help you draw through the rest of your deck, drawing you into cards that you need so you're able to win the game. And its attack is very good. For three colorless, 60 plus 20 for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Inside these theme decks, a lot of the Pokemon do require around two to three energy, which if you're attacking a defending Pokemon that has three energy, you are doing 120 damage, which knocks out most of any Pokemon that's in the theme deck format. But I want to go on to trainers, and oh man, the trainer line in this deck is pretty ridiculous. So, one potion, heal 30, pretty decent. This deck comes with not one, but two timer balls. You flip two coins for each heads, search your deck for an evolution Pokemon, you reveal it, and you put it into your hand. If you flip even one heads on a timer ball, you can get the stage one that you need, you can get your stage two Incineroar, you can get any stage one or stage two, which also is helping you thin out your deck to be able to draw into more cards that you need mid to late game. This deck also has one Ultra Ball, which is really insane. You discard two cards and you search for any Pokemon that you want. Uh, just getting rid of those garbage cards in your hand and putting them into the discard pile is very good. But also just searching for any Pokemon is even better. Plus this works really well with Oranguru. If you have Oranguru on the bench, you're essentially discarding three cards from your hand. 
you might place a Pokemon on bench, and then you can just draw cards. This deck also has two nest balls, which is also really insane, just because you can search out for Oranguru, you can search out for Torkoal right away, you can search out for any basic Pokemon that you need. If you have, if you have Beware in your hands and you need a Stuffle Wall, just play a nest ball and grab the Stuffle from the deck. And now finally, we're going to talk about the supporter line inside this deck. So this deck comes with one Lily. You draw until you have six cards in your hand. If it's your first turn, you draw until you have eight. Drawing until you have eight on your first turn, if you're lucky enough to have this, basically wins you the game. You're drawing so many cards from your deck that you just have such an advantage over your opponent. Being able to draw until you have eight, you start with seven cards in your hand, you play some cards down, you play Lily, you're drawing like five extra cards. The next supporter is one Professor Kukui. Draw two cards. During this turn, your opponent's active does 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. Drawing two is really nice, but also the plus 20 damage. And the theme deck rounds off with two Hau, just draw three cards. And that's essentially it for the overview of the Incineroar Sun and Moon theme deck. Now, just to go over some of the matchups that this theme deck has to go through, the Incineroar theme deck beats every other theme deck that is not a Sun and Moon theme deck on paper. Every other deck loses to Incineroar automatically. In terms of these two other theme decks, the Decidueye theme deck is actually a pretty good theme deck, but there's one little problem, is this fire weakness. A lot of the cards in this theme deck are weak to fire, and the colorless Pokemon are weak to fighting which the Incineroar theme deck is fire and fighting. So this deck essentially gets 100% countered by the Incineroar. The only other theme deck that really gives an even slight answer to this theme deck is the Primarina theme deck. A lot of the colorless and electric Pokemon are weak to fighting, which there are some fighting Pokemon in that deck. And even though the Primarina is super effective against the Incineroar, the Incineroar deck just has so much going for it. Final thoughts on the best theme deck right now. Uh, the Incineroar theme deck by far destroys every other theme deck except the Primarina theme deck. And even then, the Primarina versus Incineroar matchup is about a 60-40. If you are looking to go ahead and grind out some theme deck tournaments, picking up the Incineroar theme deck is definitely a very good idea. As soon as I earn another 300 coins, I am definitely picking up this theme deck and I will definitely be using it inside my future theme deck tournaments to go ahead and pick up those easy W's. If you enjoyed the video, if you could do me a huge favor and leave a like on the video, I would greatly appreciate it. And if you agree or disagree on what I think is the best theme deck, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below and I will try to reply to uh, people who leave responses. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in another